This is Dr. James Harris. This video is intended to provide you with the essential information you need to successfully perform follicular unit extraction using the Powered Safe system. Before I discuss the specific steps involved in follicular unit extraction using the Powered Safe system, I'd like to talk about several other topics which I feel are worth mentioning. The first one being the issue of dull versus sharp punches. Dull punches, because of their design, afford a certain amount of latitude in terms of the surgeon being able to assess accurately hair emergence angles and directions. Transaction rates in my hands, and this includes initial surgeries as well as revisions, uh, taking grafts from scar tissue as well as body sites such as the beard, chest, and abdomen, has been 10%. A recent presentation at an ISHRS meeting, a very experienced surgeon using a sharp technique noted that in experienced hands, there was an average of 28% transection rate. I also have some experience with robotic systems. We've tried uh, for a long time to use sharp dissection techniques, but the rate of transection was too great to be viable. We switched over to the dull punch system, and now we have very good transection rates, seeming to average less than 10%. The chief advantage of the Powered Safe system is that it's a single step dissection process. What this allows for is a very high rate of graft extractions, approximately 500 to 700 grafts per hour. I have been able to achieve burst rates of over 1,000 grafts per hour using this system. Over 95% of patients are candidates, and I would venture to say that probably 99% of Caucasian patients do very well with this method. I do recommend test procedures for African Americans and would suggest that you test not only the occiput but several locations in the temporal areas as well. This photo shows the components of the safe system including the motor control unit, the handpiece, and the foot control pedal. There are several things the surgeon must do to prepare to perform follicular unit extraction. First one is obtaining adequate magnification. I typically recommend the surgeon obtain 4.5 to 6.5 quality surgical loops to perform the surgery. The second is having a working distance that's comfortable for the physician. The patient position is also another consideration and I typically prefer prone for the extractions from the occipital area and for the temporal extractions I prefer the patient to be in the lateral decubitus position. This allows my hands and arms to be in a comfortable position while still being able to adequately identify the emerging units. The next thing is uh, considering donor area preparation. I typically like to have the hair shaved to a length of approximately 1 to 1.5 millimeters. This allows easy placement of the dissecting punch over the hairs of the follicular unit. This is the approximate view and perspective of a surgeon using 5 power visor type loops. Although it appears that there's adequate magnification, I can tell you that in my experience in teaching physicians to perform FUE, that the number one reason for the inability to correctly target and center the punch over the follicular unit is that there's inadequate magnification. The next view shows 10 power visor type loop magnification and although there's an improvement oftentimes the working distance is too close and there's still not enough magnification. This is the approximate view using six power surgical loops with telescopes and you can see that there is no doubt about the direction and angle of the targeted follicular unit. And it's only in this way that the surgeon can be sure that uh, the punch placement is correct. Here are the steps for performing powered safe system FUE and in the next few slides we'll go through each one of these individually and explain the specific requirements for each of these steps. This is an example of a full donor area shave. This allows us to extract upward to 3,000 grafts, but it also increases our efficiency as many follicular units are exposed. This is an example of a microstrip shave preparation. Small strips measuring 2 to 4 millimeters are shaved, leaving the intervening hair long. The primary advantage of this technique is that when the patient leaves the clinic, there's no evidence that she's had an extraction performed. Uh, the major disadvantage is that we're limited in terms of the number of grafts that we can extract, often limited to approximately 1,200 to 1,500 grafts during a session. 
The next step is the subcutaneous injection, and note not to messing the area. I think this enhances hemostasis, makes the dissection easier, and also helps graft removal. I usually use saline or a solution of 1 to 100,000 to 1 to 50,000 epinephrine, and this is injected into the subcutaneous fat. I use a small amount and infiltrate 3 to 5 square centimeters of skin at a time. This illustrates the process of the subcutaneous infiltration. You can see that a small amount is injected to slightly elevate the skin, and then application of pressure shows that it's not a dense tumescence, but uh, just a slight filling of the subcutaneous space. The next step is setting the speed adjustment on the drill. This is a very critical step. The initial speed setting needs to be in the first third of the range, and I'll show this in a slide here shortly. The speed has to be high enough to allow easy entry of the dull punch into the skin, but you also need to note a decrease in the speed as you advance the punch. This allows the rotation to slow down and allows the dull punch to do what it needs to do to dissect the follicular unit free from the surrounding tissue. If you don't hear a decrease in the speed, the speed needs to be decreased in small increments. You also need to note that when you change locations on the scalp, you may also need to move the adjustment dial as well, such as when you go from the occiput to the high neck area or going from the occiput to the temporal area. The initial speed setting should be somewhere in the range of the red marks that you see on this photo. The next step is the application of skin traction. And what you're trying to do is stabilize the skin so that when you apply the punch to the skin, there's minimal movement. I believe it also stabilizes the angulation of the follicular unit, making the chance of a successful extraction higher. This photo illustrates the skin traction. In the upper left, the hair bearing margin is at the zero mark on the ruler. After superior traction is applied on the right side, you can see that the hair is now at the 5 millimeter mark. The next step is the actual dissection of a follicular unit graft. I typically recommend that the foot bevel be depressed to start the rotation. Next, you align the dissecting punch to the approximate exit angle of the hairs. Engagement of the punch, which is placing the punch onto the skin surface, advancing the punch with steady pressure, allowing the punch to dissect to the depth limiter, listening and observing to appreciate a decrease in the punch rotation speed. If you need to adjust the rotation speed, do it in small increments. I usually recommend dissecting four to five graphs and evaluating these for burials and transections. You should adjust the entry angle if you need to at this time. We'll now go into these individual steps and I'll show a series of slides and videos illustrating each one of them so that you can successfully perform FUE. So the first step in the dissection of the follicular unit is punch alignment, and this is where it's critical to have adequate magnification. This example shows the follicular unit being aligned too closely to the inferior edge of the dissecting punch, resulting in a transection. Ideally, you would like the punch such that the follicular unit is in the mid portion or closer to the superior edge of the dissecting punch. This example shows the alignment of the punch such that the follicular unit ends up in the middle of the punch lumen. This is ideal, as is the next example, in which the follicular unit is aligned more towards the superior aspect of the punch. Because the motion of the punch is such that it's towards the follicular unit, this allows a margin of error. The next step is punch engagement, and this is allowing the punch to enter the skin before you advance the punch along the axis of the follicular unit. I usually recommend that the initial contact of the punch with the skin be made with the punch rotating. So the actual process is with the punch aligned to the follicular unit, you place the punch on the skin with slight force that's perpendicular to the skin surface. And you do this for an instant before you advance the punch. 
this is a schematic of punch engagement. You can see the punch is aligned to the follicular unit and force is placed perpendicular to the skin such that the leading edge makes contact with the skin. This is left there momentarily and then this can also be followed by additional perpendicular pressure such that the remaining edge of the punch enters the skin. The next step is punch advancement. So you see the punch is fully engaged and aligned with the axis of the follicular unit. The punch is now advanced deeper into the skin with gentle pressure, almost allowing the weight of the handpiece to allow its entry into the skin. The next video segment will show punch engagement. The initial two attempts will show proper punch engagement and you can see the perpendicular force followed by the advancement of the punch. The third attempt shows immediate advancement without engaging the skin first and you'll see that the punch slides across the surface transecting the grafts. So here's the perpendicular force followed by advancement of the punch. Again repeating this, perpendicular force then advancing the punch. And then finally contact with the skin with just immediate advancement. And the punch slides across the surface. We'll repeat the same segment again. So the next step is putting the follicular unit extraction all together. So we'll look at each of the steps in this video with multiple follicular units being extracted. Uh, with experience you can see that uh, the punch engagement doesn't take quite as long. You'll notice also that the rotation speed changes as the punch is inserted into the skin and again this is something that you have to look for and be aware of. If you do not see the punch slowing down this indicates a need for a decrease in speed. Some of the other things that you want to look for as you dissect is that the elevation of the graphs is apparent. So you can see the graph sticking up approximately a millimeter to a millimeter and a half. This tells you that there's an adequate dissection being performed. We'll go ahead and repeat the segment again. So again, you're aligning the punch, engaging, then advancing. Align, engage, and advance. And this is repeated. Each follicular unit extraction process or dissection process is an individual procedure. And if you're having some difficulties, go back through the list of the steps and make sure that you're performing each one properly. These graphs are being extracted with a single forcep and single pull. Not all dissections go this easily, and you may need to use a double pull technique, which I've talked about in other presentations. Here's another segment on the SAFE system for powered FUE. In this case, this patient has had a previous follicular unit extraction. You can see the previous sites. Superior tension is applied. And then typically to gain some efficiency, we'll use two people extracting the grafts after the dissection has been performed. Now that you've seen all the steps for follicular unit extraction using the powered safe system, I'll just go over a few hints. The first one is let the drill do the dissecting. In other words, don't force the handpiece. You can almost let the weight of the handpiece itself advance along the follicular unit without providing any undue pressure. I would also begin with lower speed settings. This is a little bit more forgiving and until you gain some experience, keep it slow. The other thing is make sure that the speed setting that you've selected allows the drill to slow down as you advance the punch. You have to look for the decrease in rotation speed as well as hear it. With experience though, you can increase the speed. Also look for graft elevation following your dissection. This indicates that your angles and directions of the dissecting punch are right on target. If you notice burials and transections, this is an immediate indication that you need to make an adjustment of the insertion angle or ensure that you have proper punch engagement or you might need a decrease in rotation speed. 
you notice graph burial, this indicates a need to change your technique slightly. The most common remedy is to decrease the angle of insertion just slightly, usually just by a few degrees. You can do this by bringing the handpiece just slightly closer to the skin surface. The second suggestion is to ensure proper punch engagement. If this doesn't help, examine the hair exit angle to determine if you need to increase the insertion angle. If you do have graft burials, you should make an attempt to find the graft. I'll typically place mild pressure around the site to try to induce its extrusion. You can also dilate the site with a small hemostat in order to explore the site. Usually the grafts are found at the superior aspect of the dissection site. Um, that would be at the site nearest the obtuse angle of hair exit as shown in the diagram below. If you notice transections, your rotation speed may be too fast. This will cause the dull punch to act like a sharp punch and reduce your margin for error. The second issue may be the angle of insertion. What I typically recommend is that you examine the transected units and this will give you hints as to the corrective action to be taken. This slide depicts how examining the transected follicular units will give you the information you need to take the proper corrective action. In example A, the red arrow points to the transected hair within the follicular unit. The blue arrow points to the obtuse exit angle side of the hair. This would indicate that if you had placed a more acute angle on the punch, it would have resulted in an intact follicular unit. So again, if the transection occurs on the obtuse angle side, you need to enter more acutely. The opposite is true as in example B. In this example, the transected hair occurs on the acute exit side, as shown by the red and blue arrows. The proper corrective action in this case would be to make a less acute entry. This would have resulted in an intact follicular unit. I would encourage you to pause this slide, examine it, and read the captions to obtain full understanding. I'd like to take a moment to review the steps. Each follicular unit dissection is actually a repetition of each of these steps, and if you start to have trouble or notice difficulty dissecting the grafts, I'd like you to review these steps and ensure that each one is properly followed on each extraction. So ensure that you have superior skin traction. Align the tip to match the exit angle of the hair. Engage the punch properly and then advance the punch. This is followed by checking for graft elevation to indicate that you have proper dissection. When you gain experience with follicular unit extraction, you'll come to realize that the follicular units themselves have a certain pattern and flow. As you're performing the follicular unit dissection, you'll be able to have this innate recognition of the changes in angle and direction and you'll be able to adjust to these. That's why I recommend that you perform the follicular unit extractions in a systematic stepwise fashion, meaning left to right or right to left, rather than skipping around. If you skip around, you won't be able to make these subtle changes. Weight and balance are very important and by that I mean how you handle the handpiece is very important. If you don't handle it right, you'll develop fatigue and make the dissection more difficult. So find a way to hold the handpiece that makes it comfortable for you and that you'll be able to sustain this over a long period of time. You also need to realize that each individual follicular unit dissection is a procedure, and that procedure involves certain steps that I've already described. If you're having trouble with the dissection or a certain patient, go back to the basics and make sure that you're doing each step properly. If you notice transections or burials, this is an indication that you need to change something in your technique. It may be your angle of insertion, or it could be how you're engaging the skin with the dissecting punch, or it could be the speed of the drill. Go back to the basic steps and ensure that each one is being performed properly. You now have all the information you need to successfully perform follicular unit extraction using the SAFE system. I would encourage you to practice, especially if you're already doing strip surgery, do 25 to 50 extractions on each case before you remove the strip. This will give you the experience that you need.